Hey everyone, I'm Sion, the Unexpected Maker. In today's video, we're going to take a look at ESP32s and UARTs. Now, I was going to title this video, Tiny Pico, Where the Heck Are My UARTs? Because the biggest support question I get from those considering buying a Tiny Pico or from those that have bought a Tiny Pico is usually, where the UARTs? How am I supposed to do hardware UARTs? Well, the answer to that question is, I don't have to have any hardware UARTs exposed, and this is why. The ESP32 has three hardware UARTs. UART0, UART1, and UART2. If your microcontroller board has built-in USB support, then UART0 is normally reserved for the USB input and output. All of the UARTs have default GPIO assigned to them, which is good and bad. We'll get into that in a moment. So what's great about the ESP32 is that any GPIO can be used as hardware UARTs. You don't have to use the defaults that are already in there. But how does that work? How is it possible to change the pins that you're initializing the UARTs with and actually have them run as hardware UARTs? Well, the ESP32 has what's called a GPIO matrix, which allows the chip to reroute I.O. for certain peripherals. It's like magic. So how do we initialize hardware UARTs with custom I.O. in code? Well, here's an example of initializing UART1 in both the Arduino IDE and in MicroPython. As you can see in both cases, we're just passing into the initializers the GPIO pins we'd like to use for both TX and RX. Before we have a look at the pitfalls to do with the set of default GPIO that are set up for UART1 and UART2, let's have a look at this working in practice. Okay, it's demo time. So what I have right here are two Tiny Picos. For those of you that don't know what a Tiny Pico is, it's an ESP32 board that I designed and make and sell. So I've got this one over here, which is running MicroPython, which is the blue window above. And this one over here is running C++ from the Arduino IDE. So this way I can show you it working on both sides. They are both connected via two different sets of GPIO. The Arduino is running off 21 and 22, and MicroPython is running off 32 and 33, just to show you that you can use any pins you want to use. I'm also using one of my color IPS display shields to show output from the Arduino serial UART number two, and I'm going to send data to that via serial UART number one in MicroPython. So a quick look at the code before I do that in the Arduino IDE. It's pretty straightforward. I've got 21 and 22 set up for RX and TX. I'm using the TFT ESPI library just to be able to display stuff on the screen. I've got a serial buffer that I'm going to be putting characters into that I read from serial 2 and it's got a maximum size of 32. I've got a current index for it. I've got the end of line char and I've got a bool that basically says do I have data yes or no. The main code other than the initialization of the screen that we need to worry about is over here. Serial 2 so that's uart 2begin we're telling it what the baud rate is, what the format of the data is, and what our TX and RX pins are. And then inside the loop, I've got a listen for data, and we'll have a look at that in a second. And if some data has arrived, we're displaying it on the screen. This is where all the meat happens in listen for data. I've got a char called receive data, and on serial two, if there's data in there, which means available is greater than zero, and I don't have a finished set of data. I grab the byte coming through from serial2.read. If the received data char or byte isn't the end of line character, then I'm adding it to my serial buffer and I'm increasing the index of the buffer. So I'm putting the, the byte into the buffer and I'm saying if the buffer index is greater than the buffer size, just keep stomping over the last index value, so the last character. And then there's an else, which if the received data is the end of line, I'm sticking a slash zero termination string at the end of the buffer. I'm setting the buffer index back to zero and I'm saying has data equals true. And because has data is true, it's going to display the data on the screen. Okay, that's the Arduino side. That's using UART number two, so serial two. And the initialization is serial two.begin, the baud rate, the type of data coming through TX and RX. So in MicroPython, it's as simple as opening up a connection to my board. I've connected to our shell. I'm going to go into the REPL. 
And now I'm going to just paste some code in so I don't have to type it and make a mistake while I'm typing. I'm going to say from machine import UART. I'm going to create a UART connection and it's going to be UART number one, board rate 9600, TX is 33, RX is 32. Hit enter. And now I'm going to send a message via the UART. And I'm going to make it just display UART1.write hello world. And I hit enter. And as you can see, the output has changed on the screen to say hello world. So that data came through via the two UARTs, so via serial. I can now type something else if I want. I'll make it um, this rocks. And you can see this rocks is sent through. So that's a demo of using any GPIO that's available broken out on any ESP32 to be able to create a hardware UART in either UART1 or UART2 and send and receive data. Now, there is one gotcha, and that's to do with what the default settings for UART1 and UART2 are on different types of ESP32 chips. Let's have a look at that now. This PDF here is the Pico D4 data sheet, which is the version of the ESP32 that I use on the tiny Pico. Now the GPIO list is the same for the UARTs across all of the current ESP32s. The problem is that UART1 RX and UART1 TX, these two over here, are on GPIO 9 and GPIO 10 which on a normal ESP32, like a room module, those pins are fine, but if you have a board that has PSRAM connected to it, PSRAM uses at least GPIO 10, if not GPIO 9 as well. The Tiny Pico uses GPIO 10 for its PSRAM, which means the default pin for UART 1 TX is wrong. It can't be used. So if you just initialize UART1, for instance, in MicroPython without passing custom pins in, it'll actually crash the device because it's going to try to share the UART on the RAM chip. Now it gets even worse. UART number two is on GPIO 16 and 17. 16 is UART2 RXD and 17 is UART2 TXD. Now, again, on a normal non-Pico D4 board, those pins are available. No problem, but on a Pico D4, they're actually used for the internal flash. They're reserved, you can't use them. It actually states further down in the data sheet that IO 16 and 17 are used for connecting the embedded flash and is not recommended for other uses. So again, if you initialize UART number two in MicroPython or in the Arduino IDE without passing it what the desired custom GPIO are and it defaults using the UART2 IO, it's going to crash the device. So on the Tiny Pico, you can't use either of the two defaults. On any Pico D4 board that doesn't have PSRAM, you can definitely use UART1, but you can't use UART2 because the flash uses it. And for other ESP32 boards, you may have a problem with UART1, you may not, but UART2 should be free. So it's fantastic that we can actually set up custom pins to get around this issue. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you're new here or you're not subbed, please subscribe and make sure that you've clicked the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. To my patrons, you're awesome. I really appreciate your generosity. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.